Univision. En este día, el reportaje de Primer Impacto con su host. ¿Hostes? ¿Hosto? Hostesses. Con su hostesses. No, hostesses. no, no, no. Anfitrión. Con su anfitrión. ¿Qué tienes? ¿Cómo estás, señor? Wait, pero you're a host, too. So you gotta say no, no, but this is about you tonight. Oh, it's a day. No, no, no. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. Okay. Yeah, they can know because they always see the light, but you know what I mean. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> so, Jorge. Hit me, hit me. Since the last interview, mm -hmm. what has changed? Nothing. When was the last interview? The last interview was the man a couple months ago. Three months ago? Two no, months ago? No, that's way too much, dude. Two months ago. Two months ago? Bro. It was not the last. It was the last interview. The last interview, we were in Orlando. That was September. So about a month and some, about a month and a half. Damn. Because we had just come up from Orlando because I remember speaking about it in my interview. And we recorded it the same day you were yours. You're right. You're actually right. Damn. That's so about a month and a half. That's kind of fast, dude. Um, actually, yeah. So I, I think, I think, um, I don't know. The first thing that comes to my mind that's changed um, is probably this year so far, travel. More than probably I've ever traveled in a single year of my life, I think. So, yeah. So, I went to Philly, and we just did D.C. So, one thing I actually learned in D.C. is about, I don't want to say, I guess Asian people or Korean people, right? So, like, you know, we was out there with, like, um, with basically, like, a tour guide, in other yeah. words, essentially. Because she kept telling us about, like, how Korean people lead and whatnot. And it was interesting. I ate octopus for the first time, so that changed. Not that long ago, I ate snails or crisps. That changed. You got me eating weird food, bro. I already told you. This I know, but how good has squid all that is fire, fire, fire which is thing. weird, which is weird because you normally I'd be like, nah, bro, that's not, that's not it. You got me? I wouldn't normally eat that, yeah. but uh, it's just it's actually pretty good food. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. So now like you see the cliches and you're like, I understand why they eat it. <laughs> yeah, I actually do. Actually, it's pretty fire. Um, what else do we have? Um. We had ice cream on 30 degree weather. How was that? Oh, yeah. Hey, that shit was fire. Hey, you know, honestly, I don't think that it really is a bad time for ice cream. I know, but that ice cream, at least the one I had was good. It was really good. That one I had was really good. Like, um, it was, I, I really like like the vanilla with nuts and chocolate mm -hmm. mix and shit like that. So, that shit was pretty fire, man. And it was that third, right? It was like 30 something degrees. Very freezing, bro. Freezing cold. But it was actually pretty fire. I liked it. So, you the first time nothing has changed. Now you told me you've seen a lot of Well, I've learned. Yeah. I, I said so, that that's the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Learned. Now, let me ask you a question. Mindset-wise, still feel like you're the same person as a month and a half ago? Mm. Now, you know what's funny, man? Um, so, I was just talking about this yesterday. Um, so, like, you know, I've been on my... So, the way I'm budgeting, like, financially right now, I'm budgeting everything right now for what I make right now, right? So... Just so I could, so you know, just so I got the structure and you could change numbers mm -hmm. later. And, you know, oddly enough, like I've been trying to adopt this mindset or like this mindset to have a certain kind of lifestyle, right? The lifestyle that doesn't make like the bougie you get me? Like to stop mm -hmm. thinking about like, oh, you know, try to get a nice car or try to get a nice house, you know, stuff like that. Like things that, you know, I don't think they're bad. They're not bad to want. But I think they cripple you because, you know, like if you're only aiming for those things, I know that once you get that, it's not going to fulfill you. You're going to just move on to the next mm -hmm. material thing. Um, coming back, um, I've kind of like, I've kind of been in this medium of finding out the balance, right? Of what what can I actually like set a goal to and know that okay like once I have this will I be comfortable will I be satisfied mm -hmm. with it I feel like I will be but it's just it's not a, a for sure thing like you just never quite know mm -hmm. you get me like I've been thinking about it like in a small term like as far as like a car um and maybe I pull the trigger maybe not you get me like I, I'm, I still want to wait like at least like another year or so before I ever make that decision because I feel like if that thought continues to mm -hmm. linger on it's been lingering on for years now but and that thought continues to linger on after the mindset I have from this year alone, and it lingers on over, then then I might just, you know, I might just do that. But, but as far as, like, me, man, like, I don't know. I, it, it's, it's, um, there's days, man, where I feel like I'm lost, and there's days where I'm like, okay, I kind of know where I'm headed to. I mean, I feel like that's just your 20s, right? 
So there's this part of me that's like, okay, I know that I'm feeling this way or whatever because I'm in, you know, I'm young right mm -hmm. now. You're still trying to figure everything yeah. out. Um, but then there's another part of me that's like, damn, like, what if I don't accomplish anything, right? Like, what, what does that, what does that mean to mm -hmm. me? Because the problem is that you think, at least me, I think a lot about what does it mean for the people around me if I don't become nothing? You get me? Mm -hmm. Like, what does it mean to my mom? What does it mean to my dad? What does it mean to my friends? Like, if I don't, in their eyes, I don't become, I mm -hmm. guess, successful. So then, for me, it's almost like, where do I find... I don't even want to find a medium. I just want to know what it means to me. Like, what does, like, real life, like, real success, success for me as far as my life? Mm -hmm. You get me? Not, not like, you know, I, I mean, just my life. You get me? Like, yeah. what, what is it that I'm headed towards? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, damn, like, I'm good. You get me? And a lot of that is a lot of things. You get me? It's where I live, the money, the what I'm doing. But the last thing that I said is the most important one is what I'm doing. You get me? Like, every day I hear constant complaints about how you know oh man if i just won the lottery um i don't feel like coming to work today you know that that scares me because it's like fuck like i don't i don't knowing it i don't ever want to be put in that position where it's like fuck why, why am i here because i'm already like that like at the moment you know you get me like with like the new the new things i have going on at mm -hmm. work i'm already in that position of when i have to do that certain thing i'm like fuck like like, I hate it. You know? and, and it's funny, I, I bet you feel the same way. That when you were younger, you, you thought that, like, you had to choose to fall into that line. Then you realize that if you're not careful enough, you end up there. Yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you know what, yeah, if you don't put enough thought and enough work into it, you will end up there. Like, like I think that is, that is like, one of those end, end of the line roles for everybody who does not become intentional about their life. Yeah, yeah. I like that you said that, intentional. Like, and, and I know you because I know you're an intentional person. Like, uh, you ponder everything. You ponder upon ponder. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you think about what you think about, yeah. right? Which is like rhetorical, but it yeah. makes sense. So, uh, once a uh, long, actually, a few weeks ago, I heard this quote, and it, and it's impacted the way I'm trying to approach everything. And it says, you know, I used to be scared of failing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm scared about succeeding at things that don't matter. Mm, damn, that's deep. I like that. What would be considered failure for you in your life? Now, I don't know everybody else doesn't have social standards for you. What would you feel would be your life failed if it doesn't accomplish X or Y? Honestly, right now, um, I was just saying this to myself right now. Right now, doing I'm down fulfills me. Like, it really does. Um, not to the point where it's like, oh, I'm just by shooting, I'm good. Like, I always think about I need to be doing more every single mm -hmm. time. I need to post more on IG. I need to... Uh, try to think of, I don't know, shit to like, you know, put more content out, to try to get more value. That's what I need to do more, but doing it, like actually just doing this, makes me feel like I did something for the day. Like something that's productive. Mm -hmm. You get me? Something that, that means something to somebody. I feel like if I, if I stay where I'm at, and, and I stay there, like just trying to climb the ranks like everybody else does, because they're trying to get a nice check, I failed. Like if I, if I, let's say I make a six figure job, right? I make a six figure salary job, but what I'm doing is not meaningful to me, to somebody else. I failed mm -hmm. because like, like, I mean, I've seen it, man. Like the money is dope. You get me? Like you get to live in a nice place, right? Nice wooden floors and the fridges and the, uh, microwaves are made out of metal and nice cabinets and it all looks pretty. You get me? You have a a bowl for a sink mm -hmm. and, you know, crystalline showers with nice towel. All of that stuff is nice. You get, me? You get a nice, like, you know, money can buy you things. I want to say, it, you know, it, it takes certain kind of money to make you happy, right? Like, say, like for financial freedom mm -hmm. purposes, right? Like, you don't have to worry. Like, yeah. you have, you, you're comfortable in your house, you're comfortable in your car, you have enough money in the savings. If you get fired a day or you lose or whatever, you're good. You know what I mean? It takes certain kind of money to provide this kind of security where you sleep well at night, right? But I don't know if it's because I haven't been out on my own or whatever that I think like this, but I'd rather make, like, you know, stay making $40,000 a year, $50,000 a year, and if I could, like, do what's fulfilling, because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what we're all doing. Yeah. We're chasing fulfillment. You get me? We're trying to find something that fulfills us, you know? And some of us, we work our 9 to 5 because the weekend is going to fulfill us. Mm -hmm. You get me? Like, 
we do the nine to five grind and we the sacrifice whatever that you might hate because it pays you enough so on the weekend you can enjoy right those two days but i don't want to do that you know i mean i want to be able to go every day and of course there's not every day is not perfect you know i mean there's going to be times where you don't want to be there because you feel sick or whatever you know I mean but you're still gonna get mm-hmm. up and you're gonna know that you are making an impact, right? That that's that, and I think that that's kind of what I just aiming for. Just can I make an impact? You get me? Can I make an impact? And can I be fulfilled by doing this? And right now I just feel fulfilled. So I feel like maybe later it might change. Who knows, right? But at this moment in time, that's my failure. If I stay at a nine to five desk job, is not for me. You get me? Like mm-hmm. that is it's just not. Like, the money's cool, you know, it allows me to spend time with friends, it allows me to pay bills, it allows me to have certain luxuries, whatever. But it's not it's not worth it in the long run, you mm-hmm. get me? Yeah. So that's where I feel like I'll fail. And you know, as you were saying that, uh, part of me started wondering if, if that is just us being vain. Like, have you ever noticed that everybody aspires for fulfillment of life, but uh, culturally speaking, that's very American. Right. Most yeah. most cultures are, you know, I have certain obligations and those trump desires. Right. You know, I, I, I guarantee your parents are the same way. Your parents are not thinking, do I fulfill, fulfill? Does my kids need food? Yeah. My kids need a roof? Yeah. My wife, this, their dad's probably saying, my wife needs this. Your, wife, your, your mom is thinking my husband needs that. Yeah. Right? And so, would you say that this is an American culture of what I need in my life to fulfill my desire, my fulfillment? Or is that like a... Eternal existential issue right. for everybody. I mean, you know, I, I like that you that you, that you said that because I'm gonna segue a little bit. That's part of that's actually one of the main reasons why I don't want to get married or have kids because it requires sacrifice that I don't know I can make. You get me? Like like my mom and dad, they have to right. They they at this point it's like yo like I have to you know do X Y and Z. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we have a kid, we have kids, you know, we have to provide for them, food, like, all those things that you said, you know. When you start a family, your needs, your desires become the back not seat. even yeah. secondary. Yeah. You know I mean? They're just, you know, like, is my family good? You know what I mean? Like, that, that's what you focus on. Um, I think that, I like that you said that because it is selfish. You know what I mean? When you're trying to be fulfilled, in a way, it's selfish. But... If I think about it, if you, you know, you can be fulfilled and still take care of your family. Of course. You know what I mean? You, you can. You might even, people will even say that you'll be better off because you're a better person for them. Exactly. Like, you, you, exactly. That makes perfect sense. You know, um, but, okay, but to kind of come back to your question, though, are you saying, is it like in the American dream? Right? Yeah, because yeah, a lot of times, if, if, you know, you, you we were, especially, like, you had a, we had a Korean tourist this week. Right. You know, and they kept talking about how, as a family, she did this, and as a family, yeah, 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 you know, she it was it, she didn't sound like I do this. Yeah, it's yeah. we do. We do. It's so American vocabulary, uh, you know, and it's funny because even the word America at the center of it all is I. I. Yeah. Right, and that's the American vocabulary. Is how do I feel? How do I want to approach this? You know, but a very culture, all the cultures, Hispanic, Asian, or whatever, it's very we centered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you think American dream is, is killing the, the idea of me fulfilling somebody else's goals? Um, so, okay. So this is the thing. The, the, whole, the whole thing about the American dream is to be able to come to a country where you have all these freedoms and whatnot, mm-hmm. right? And be able to, to come from nothing and be something, right? Like, you know, we hear it all the time, right? You have immigrants that came to this country with zero dollars in their pocket, mm-hmm. with two dollars in their pocket. And they've made millions of dollars because of the opportunities that these places give, right? That's what I've always seen the American dream to be, right? The American dream is, like, flashed off as, you know, you have the crazy dope car, the dude, super nice house in the hills. The facade. Right? That, that's, that's what the American dream is, right? Like, that's what everybody tries to sell, whatever. That's what keeping up with the Joneses is, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, yeah. you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You're trying to, like, have the nicest things, you know, because the Joneses have the best of the best, right? Um... I think the American dream is bullshit, and to be completely honest with you, because the thing is that people, all of those things that we that we ch- chase is for a reason. You get me? Fulfillment. Fulfillment is like happiness. Yeah. You get me? That's that's basically mm-hmm. how I see it. Um, and the reason why it's bullshit is because those things are never going to really fill you and bring joy to you and bring peace to you. They never will. And 
you're gonna for the rest of your life chase that. You get me? So I I can see this two ways, right? If you're a person that believes in God and you know all of that stuff, I feel like that's the ultimate fulfillment, right? Like with that, you just have this peace. Um, when you just have that tight relationship, right? Um, if you choose whatever, you if you're not in that realm, is there relationships that you have with people anyway? So at the end of the day, it comes down to people, it comes down to relationships. Mm-hmm. You get me? That's fulfilling. You know what I mean? Like, look, it's cool. You can have a house in the hills, right? And nice cars and all this money and stuff. But, like, you know, when you want to just chill and go to the movies, you're going to call up a gir- bunch of girls and go... You can do that, sure. You get me? I don't know. If you're Dan Bilzerian and you want to do that and that's going to fulfill you for the rest of your life, I don't know if it will. Cool. Um, at least for me, I just think that at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. Mm-hmm. You get me? It's about people. You can have all this money in the world and all of these things, but it's who you experience them with that matters. You know, happiness is already inside of you. Like, you you choose to be happy every single day, you get me? Mm-hmm. I said something a while back, like, oh, you know, you, we're searching for happiness, we're searching for happiness, and you're like, like no, like, you have it inside, and it's so true, like, it's... People search for happiness in other people, you get me? Like, they get a girlfriend or a boyfriend, because you make me happy, I want to be with you. That's wrong. Like, you should be happy, period, you get me? Yeah. Like, like, you know, all of these people that we have in our lives, they may add up, you get me? They may... Mm-hmm. Give like steroids to this happiness or whatever, but you should be happy w- with yourself. You get me with who you are as a person, with who you are mentally, how mm-hmm. far you've gotten in life. Like, you know, that's what should bring you happiness. Yeah. It's not these material things. Like, re- that's mm-hmm. so real. Like, at the end of the day, look, you gotta think of it like this people are worrying too much about their bank account, they don't worry enough about the funeral. Right? Now, some people might be confused that like, way. What do you mean? Okay, well, look, it's a very simple, very simple concept I heard, um, like, the Gary, Vee, than, right? the Gary Vee one, like, more than half a year ago. He said, if you worry about the people, the amount of people that will come to your funeral, you get me? Because you've impacted their lives, you've said things to change, you said things to feel, you said things to cry, you said things to set emotion, mm-hmm. you get me? To build a connection. At the end of the day, those things add up to your bank account anyways. You get me? Like, it's it's the real thing that really matters. The you get me? Worth. When you're dying, cool. All these... Like, and again, people people could watch this right now and be like, oh, you're just saying that because you're broke. You know, you're in the hood. You don't know what you're talking about. You're right. I don't. I'm not rich or nothing, right? Nowhere near it. So maybe, you know, you might have something else, but from what I've heard from a bunch of rich people and from a bunch of, you know, like people like, you know, out in, online mm-hmm. and stuff like this stuff, like it really doesn't make you happier. It adds on yeah. to certain things. You know what I mean? Like it just, money, all of this money, it'll add on. It'll if you're miserable, yeah. you're going to be even more miserable. Yeah, it accentuates whatever you, you're facing. Exactly. So, you know, all of these little things, um, you know, you just need to realize all these little things don't matter. You know what I mean? You need to, like look in the mirror and be like, are you happy with who you are? And that's what should bring you happiness. Everything that you do should accentuate that. You know what I mean? So the amount of people that come to your funeral, the kind of people that are there because you did X, Y, and Z, that matters more than, oh, I got to get my paper, I got to get my paper, I got to get my paper. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That, that's what matters. And because at the end of the day, that's what you remember for. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, like, look, Steve Jobs, right? He's remembered for Apple. But as a human being, from what I've heard, I haven't yeah. seen Steve Jobs first, he, a bad human being, blah, 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 he wasn't a good dad, you know, that's, that's your legacy, obviously your legacy is Apple, where you left, cool, you know what I mean, like, you know, mm-hmm. technology, all of that stuff is cool, but you as a person, you didn't leave, you know, mm-hmm. you might not care about that, you might be like, oh, I don't care, but I, I, I personally care. Okay. And let me transition somewhere, now that you mentioned, you know, personal, the personal part, so, if you had to describe yourself in six words, three that are good, three that are bad, shoot. Oh shit! Words, just words. Single. Yeah. Just... Single. I mean, they can have like a like a <laughs> a dash, but but the idea is words, not yeah. not sentences. Yes, right, let me try to think about this. Three bad ones, three good ones. So all right, I haven't thought about it deep, deep. Cause you just asked me this, so I'm gonna just say this as as, as it you comes, feel it. as I feel it. Okay. So, I'll go with three good first. Okay, that's probably the hardest one, and I would say thoughtful. You know, it's funny that you asked me that too. I've got, I've, I've been asked this question in an interview 
and have to bullshit around it. Because you don't feel like you have them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I the same I'm question. Like, Shit. I feel like, like, uh, uh, and I give you that, like the basic, like, hardworking, dedicated. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you have the, but, right, but thoughtful. You know I mean, that, that, that one, I'm, I'm always, like you said, pondering or pondering, yeah. pondering by pondering, whatever, right? Okay, so I would say thoughtful. Um, wait, wait, this as a person, as a man, just like, Whatever three words possibly describe you, whether it's as a man, as a person, in relationship, uh, individual, collectively, whatever you feel, three words that would describe you positively. Alright. I'll go with thoughtful. Um, damn, I wanted to say caring, but I don't know if I'm caring, though. Uh, is this, what would you say, thoughtful and caring to different things to you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, for sure. Cause I I could it, it's almost like uh you know thoughtfulness. You could express this like for example, look, I could express this emotion of of I mean this this thought about whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean like about this, but it doesn't mean to act on it. I feel yeah. like caring is yeah, the like, action. The actual of stepping, like so it's like the like I'm thoughtful, so therefore I'm caring. Therefore I'm whatever comes right, next. Right, exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's okay. kind of hard, Chris. What the fuck, man? It's, it's because that's hard. You know, a lot of times I find it I find it ironic that people outside can describe us better than we can describe ourselves. Yeah. So like I can easily you tell me yo name three things about you, I'll be like I'll give you ten. Right. But now I put you in the position and that's why I want I want you to examine yourself, you know. Right. The point of this interview is so we get to get a glimpse of who George really is. Yeah. So examine yourself in front of the camera, in front of people, in front of my of me. You know, like who are you to people? Or who you know, are you to yourself? Well, how do you describe yourself? I will break this. Um I had a girl tell me um, she sent me a tweet about something like something about narcissists or whatever. So this year I've gotten a lot of oh you're you're kind of cocky you're full of yourself type type is, shit. Is right? that good or bad for you? Oh, that's what I want to get to. So initially I thought that was bad. Like I think of it as like well I'm not I want to say I'm cocky I want to say I'm this I'm not but I said you know what this is how people are perceiving me though and I can't knock how you view me. Mm -hmm. So I don't, maybe I am a narcissist. Uh, you know the 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 thing about narcissists is that you read the definition of narcissism. It's like you know is indulged, self absorbed, self absorbed. I'm like uh, I don't know about all that. Um, cause like I said it before, like I don't see myself in the mirror. And be like oh, you're a good looking guy. I can't do that. Like I honestly can't do that. Like you 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 know you can have your opinion on me whether you think I'm good looking or I'm bad looking, whatever. I just don't have an opinion on me. Based on that, I, to me, I'm neutral. So yeah. it's hard for me to think I'm a narcissist. You get me? Now I get like the old because of the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you. I don't know. I, so, so you would say you're confident? I get that. That's how I would say. I guess it's confidence, but whatever. But if you view me as that, then I can't knock it because that's just how you view me. Yeah, but like, I'm interested in now, three words that you view yourself. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, yeah I get you. I get you. I get you. Okay, okay. That's a, all right. Let, let me try to break this down. Clean, all right? So I'll say, okay, thoughtful. Caring. I right, we're going to go with caring. I mean, you don't feel comfortable. You can change it. It's your three words. I'll say, okay, thoughtful, caring, and... Observant. I'll give you that one. And observant. And the reason I say observant is because I tend to... So, so th this is what I mean by action. I tend to look at things, and when I say observe, I don't mean like this. Like, you know, we go out, and then it's like, yo, you peep how many people? Like, no, not like that. You know what I mean? Because you're like, nah, you never peep nothing. Yeah, you really like, don't. Right. This is what I mean by observe. By observe, I mean like when I do look at people, I kind of start reading tales. I start reading like small body languages mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I can kind of decipher things. The things that sometimes I don't. The, I don't the, the subcontext. Right. I just don't take actions on mm -hmm. that. I still treat you how I want to act. Yeah. You get me? So it's like, oh, you're this kind of person. Okay, cool. I don't care. I'm still gonna treat <laughs> you like everybody else. You get me type shit. Yeah, so yeah. so that, that that's what I was so I'll say those three words. Those three words might not be the most definitive words for me. Well, you can't define a person in three words. Right. But I guess, you know, They're big those, those are those three. Big now if you tell me bad <laughs> Just give bad. me three, George. I know you're about to go off, but just give me three. <laughs> Alright, bro. So I would say bad is mouth. 
So I definitely have a mouth. Since I was a little kid till today, I have a reckless mouth. I, it's calmed down a lot. But even when I was a little kid, like reckless mouth all the time. So that's definitely 100% like mm. not going to stop. Um, two will be stubborn. And not so much stubborn like, yo, bro, don't put your hand in there. You're going to get hurt. Nah, what the fuck? You know, not, not like that. But more uh, stubborn in the sense that I don't want to view... Um, like, for, I'll give you an example. Like, w- one example, right? Like, happy wife, happy life. No. That's what I'm serving. Yeah. Because realistically, yeah, that's true, right? But, no. Like, I, I don't care. You refuse. I refuse <laughs> to be like, oh, yeah, you have to let her win in an argument. Yeah, you know what I mean? Comply. You have, because if, if you don't, it's not going to end. And she's mm-hmm. going to have an attitude. And I know that. Like, I know that if I just say, okay, you know what? You're right. Even though you're wrong, it's going to be cool. I can't let that shit slide. <laughs> I have to fight that shit, yo. I had to. So stubborn. And then that leads me right to the next one. Argumentative. I debate. Like, I have to debate. And I don't know if that's a negative or not, but in a way, I kind of see it as a negative. Because it's like, yo, no I, matter... I think it's like a like a, a double-edged sword. Like, right? it could be good or bad. You can pull out BS out of people, mm-hmm. but you also just kind of, like, hammer people. Like, you're wrong, you're wrong. Right, right, right. <laughs> So I, was like, I mean, look, I could go for a fourth one. We could go with jerk, if you want. You, to. you think you you feel like you're a jerk? Yeah, because well, you know, this is the thing. I think in in certain, I guess, I don't know if a jerk, but so you know, in in society, we're supposed to treat girls um like certain way. flowers, you know. Thing. I don't treat girls like that. I treat I call girls my nigga. Like yo, what's good, my <laughs> nigga? Like you know, what's up with you, bro? Like you know, I talk to them how I talk to guys. You get me? I interact with girls most of the time. How I interact with guys. You get me? Um, I'm not like you know super sweet or anything mm-hmm. like that. You know, so for the most part, at least I probably have been maybe maybe one or a few times with a girl. I don't know. I, I really don't. I can't remember. But but that's what I'll say in a way. I, I feel like I feel like people's perception. Of me has hasn't changed though. You get me? Like people are still to this very day, um, perceive me as like the I don't know, like a player or whatever. All the f- all the time I've gotten this from middle school to today. You get me? No matter what I've really done or whatever, I've always gotten that perception. I don't think that will ever change. I feel like I've become like, and we talked about this. It's almost like I kind of want to embody that perception more yeah. and more because it's like this is how I'm viewed as. What what if I actually embody this like just just mm-hmm. almost like for an experimental thing for me but I never reached that point like where I could be like oh, okay I could be a player I can't because I was just talking about this yesterday too um I have to make it a point for you to see where I'm coming from yeah like for example like let's, hear about it. yeah like let's say I, I like you know if I want to deal with somebody and for example right hypothetical I say you know I I'm not a relationship kind of guy so I don't want no relationships I need you to understand that point. You know I me? Mean? Like some guys will be like, oh, you know, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not into relationships. They say that, but they say it other ways that doesn't sound so straightforward. Yeah. I need to be straightforward. And they'll say it once and then they'll probably be like, you know, sweet or whatever, however they're going to be. You get know I me? Mean? And then the girl might get swayed. I can't do that. Like I need to make this so clear that it's like. Now, now, let me, let me ask you, is, is this because, um, deep down you're protecting the girl or because you're protecting yourself? I think I'm protecting myself. Yeah? To be completely honest. It's, it's um, like, uh, this is the contract. If you're going to sign it, read the small letter first. Yeah. It, it, so here's the thing. I hate drama. I honestly do not like drama at all. I don't deal well with drama. And when I say I don't deal with drama, I just push it aside. Like, I don't like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's not my thing. Um. So for me to avoid drama, for me to avoid, um, I don't know, a weird text message or something like that, I like to be clear about my intentions. You get me? So, in a way, though, I am kind of protecting the mm-hmm. girl, but at my interest. You get me? So, it's really for me. Mm-hmm. You get me? I'm not doing it because it's, it's strictly for you. No, like, we're, I'm trying to, I might be trying to get something out of you. I just want you to know. You get me? That kind of person that I am, which is a bad person. <laughs> Honestly speaking, it's just a bad person. So, I need you to understand that you're about to deal with a bad guy. According to you. To me, right. But if uh, you ask the probably the ten closest people they know, there's an, a few people we know. Are Let me ask, you, what doesn't make me a bad guy? Let me ask a question. What makes you a bad guy? My actions. But I would argue that your actions do not make you a bad guy. Like, like for example, you're one of the most hardworking, dedicated, okay. thoughtful people I know. 
You will literally go out of your way to make people feel included. Even if they have like no business towards you because somebody else is connected to them, then you connected to that person, you feel like, okay, it's your responsibility to make them feel included as well because you care about this specific person. Right, right. You know, and most people are not like that. Most people are like, I care about you, but it ends there. Right, right. But you extend that grace to anybody else that means to somebody, you know? And, and few people are, are that conscious to, to, to be intentional about it because you might mean it, but most people are not intentional about their actions. And I think you're a very thoughtful person in the sense that you will literally tell me, yo, I feel whack today. Yeah. You might not be able to say why you feel whack, but you can voice that you that something's off in you. Mm-hmm. I have. You, 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 you can voice when it's like, yo, I, I don't know, something, something's not right today. Right. You know? And, and so you might not be able to get to the bottom of it the same day, or you might be in a funk for a couple of days, but then eventually you realize, oh, this is what was causing it. And I think those kind of like like depths and self awareness allow you to thrive in relationships, even if you feel like you don't want to. Well, you see that that that's why I would say why I'm so I don't think I'm a bad guy in the sense of the my friends are you know like family right like it's it's always been like that so with with friends is is different you know like like I say it's. The way we interact and stuff with each other is not super nice, you know, fucking constantly ranking each other. And con- you get me? Like, constantly on each other's ass. Yeah. You get me? Like, just talking shit. So, um, when it comes to, like, some of these you said, it makes sense, like, what you're saying. But I don't, I feel like that's the same reason why I can't be in, like, let's say, intimate I'm not relationship. Intimate relationship okay. Because it's like... I put my feelings to like two in the middle. Yeah, I mean, like so for like I look, I come in my house every day, and my mom knows this, right? Because me and mom has this conversation. I come in the house every day. Mom's like, "Hey, how you doing, love?" Or no, whatever. I go, I don't blow kids. I like I do this <laughs> twice, and I come upstairs. You know, and I, I have to like kind of get like my shit together, whatever, before I feel like I can interact. You, you gotta take off the hot that that work hat off, right? To put that house Georgia exactly. off, exactly. And and you know like sometimes like I it is I don't know man I I guess it it all comes down to the type of person because you know like for guys guys don't look at things how girls look at things. For, sure. you know what I mean? for guys for girls certain things are a big deal that for guys is not a big deal. It's like yo who the fuck every time look. Like, my mom can make a big deal out of that, right? My mom could if she wants to. She, she, like, she could be like, yo, like, how come you don't say yeah. hi when you come in, right? But my dad wouldn't give a fuck. Like, my dad doesn't <laughs> even say hi to me. You get me? He's, <laughs> and we live together. Yeah, there's times where he just like, you know, he just walks away. Like, my it's dad's... not like a manly nod. Exactly. Like, like you know, it's, and, and that's like, my dad has more conversations with my mom. Like, that's the person I hear him talk to the most. Like, I don't hear my dad really, like, have conversations with the, my sister or myself. You know, we don't really talk like that. And we fucking live together. So, possibly, you know, part of my dad is, like, a, a big part of me, like, in, in how he interacts, you know what I mean? Because my dad just kind of comes in, yo, what's good, you know what I'm saying? Like, my dad's not, um, super, like, you know, like, I, I don't, like, I told you, I, I, I've i never seen my parents kiss in, in my entire life. Like, I'm telling you, I'm 23, I've never seen my mom and dad kiss in the mouth. 23 years of living with them. Mind you, my parents have been together forever. Like, yeah. since they got married, they never got divorced, never separated, never lived separate houses or get the fuck out or go sleep on the couch. None of that. I've never experienced none of that. Like, ever. If they happened, it didn't happen to my knowledge. You get me? <laughs> so, you know, that that's what I grew up with. You get me? Like, I grew up with that. And it's hard for me to kind of break out of that. Like, I would have to be very intentional. You know I mean, I'll have to be try to be very sweet, and it's just it's just not fitting mm-hmm. for me. It's just not like you guys say. It's not well. In, it doesn't sit well in my spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that phrase. It, it it just doesn't. So that's why I feel like you know, in that case, I'll be a, a, a bad guy. You know what I mean, in that case, because I won't. I just can't like, like you know, like this is the system. It's like you'll fit this. No, like I don't want to yeah. fit it. You know what I mean, like no. You know what I mean, like oh, this is how you're supposed to like treat girls this is how you like i don't want to do that though like why like why should we do that you know what i mean like, yeah. like well you know like, girls are like this sweet flower i remember i had this guy tell me that like you know women are like flowers and you know you got to do it's like no what if i don't want to bring you flowers what if i don't want to you know what i mean like, shit like you know what i find funny about you is that um you are a very opinionated person huh? 
but you're really very outspoken. Mm-hmm. Like in a social context, if anybody's been around George in a social context, they always have to start conversation because you just watch and nod and laugh in the back. Yeah. All the time. But yet, the moment someone says something that doesn't sit well in your spirit, it's like, oh, but like everybody else clears the room. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If we know you, we're just going to just space out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let this go off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so funny. Um, That's what I mean by observing. Like, I really do. Like, you know, like, when we're in a group of people, I just met somebody, I, I don't like to talk. You know I mean? I honestly, I like to let you talk and express yourself and everything because I want I need to know who you are kind of person like am I gonna really fuck with you yeah you know I, mean? I have to that's what that's what I'm saying like it's, it's like, look like when I think about dating it's like I can't really date because <laughs> when I date I talk about real shit like like if I date I'm a rant I'm gonna go on rant like yo look I don't want a relationship I don't want this why are you on a date I don't know bro you kind of look good and you know like, <laughs> I ain't trying to date I'm just gonna go up whatever happens after <laughs> right so it's, it, I don't know, I'm a complex person. Maybe I would think, maybe I'm just young. Like everybody says, maybe, I, who, who fuck knows? But I don't even know. <laughs> so who knows? But yeah, man. There's no better way to end it. Than, yeah. than, you yeah, literally yeah. just caught a glimpse of how complicated, confusing, up and down, and yet very complete thought George is. If you have any questions, man, send them. We have to keep recording. I love this personal interviews, honestly. Uh, but yeah, man, we appreciate your support. We appreciate the follows, the like, the comments. We appreciate the fact that you guys just take a moment to even listen. Yeah. Uh, even if you don't comment, like, or anything, uh, we just appreciate your time. I appreciate you. We just want to keep encouraging you to figure out yourself. You know, one thing that George is sh- showing to us is there's conflict within every person. You know, there's like the good, the bad, the middle, the ugly, the up and down, and whatever. And it's okay. We're just trying to figure it out as we go. Uh, you know, this is what I'm down. It's all about. It's living. So. So. so.